This is hydrogen tap one. What we're doing now is testing a 110 volt system. The plates are plugged into a AC converter or inverter. We're using the fuse on that to test to see how many amps it's pulling first. As you can see, it's already reset itself. It's drawn more than four amps. Now that we know approximately how much, we're going to plug it into the lab outlet, which is fused at 40. If you look on the bottom corner of the screen, that is the voltage. It's 106 volts, and the amps is around 5 amps. What we're doing is converting 110 AC to DC, so that loss is the difference between the 110 and the 106. As you can see, we're producing considerable amount of hydrogen gas there. At 100 volts, it's pretty easy to produce hydrogen. The problem here is that we've had to space the plates apart a lot farther than we had before. Any closer together and the amps jump off the scale. The plates are as close together as I can put them before the amps go too high. Even putting the plates one spacer closer blows the fuses. As you can see, the unit is off now. We're going to plug it directly into the lab outlet, which will give us 110. It's fused at 40 amps. And you'll see the hydrogen peeling off of this plate. This is ordinary tap water. There is no electrolyte in it. And you can see we just plugged it in. We're running at 5 amps. And there's your hydrogen. There's enough hydrogen coming off there do considerable damage. We're at 106 volts as you can see. That's the voltage difference between that and the AC which is 110. That's going through a converter that converts AC to DC and we'll show you what that looks like. The reason for this test was I've gotten so many requests from people asking what a 110 volt test would look like. While this test is going on, I'm preparing the Series 2 system to put in the car. The setback was the cold weather is giving us a problem with the freezing of the water since we're using tap water. As you can see, there's the voltmeter and the amps to the right. The Series 2, what I'm testing for now is using a 0 0.09 amperage to run through the plates all the time after the unit's turned off, which should give the water just warm enough temperature to keep it from freezing. The other alternative is to wrap the unit to keep it warm during the night. And of course, using a, a thermostat on there to turn that heater on and off. What you're seeing here is the converter that converts AC to DC. I'm holding the positive output 
which gives you positive DC and to the right is the negative DC. The upper two prongs there are the AC in, which that's not polarized since AC is alternating current. Again, what we're looking at here is the converter that converts 110 to essentially 106, 108, depending on the voltage, AC voltage going in. The output is DC. The Series 2 system, again, will incorporate a heater, or we're going to keep the plates on during the night and drawing a 0 0.09 amps, it looks like. And that will keep the water warm enough, hopefully, so that it will not freeze. The ultimate would be to have a thermostat in it so we could always keep it on and then off again. Right now, what I'm going to do is test the Series 2 unit overnight outside the car to see if this will do the will fix the problem. Again what you're looking at is the converter that converts AC to DC. You can pick that up at almost any electronic shop, Radio Shack included. They're not very expensive. I think that was a couple of dollars. You can get them to convert almost any amount of current. The problem with this is it's got a voltage drop. As you could see, from about 110, it dropped it to 105, 108. AC voltage is not continuous. If you put a meter on it, you'll find that it goes from 100 to 